three fun updates I just discovered. Unsubscribe links, emojis, and subject lines. Updating behavior alerts. Hey, it's Sylvia Dana here with Think Future Real Estate, EXP Realty, and the Sylvia System. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. When you click on the subscribe button below this video, you'll see a little bell. Click on the bell and you'll get future notifications. Three fun updates I just discovered. Unsubscribe link. Have you been sending emails from Keep Core and then people like just reply back that they want you to remove them for the list or that they're trying to unsubscribe and they can't or, you know, something like that. Put a one in the chat if you've had any, you know, questions in your mind, like how do people unsubscribe from my website? Um, when somebody starts getting emails from you, this is my like, own Gmail account that I use for everything. So I don't usually eat, just all my junk basically goes here now. <laughs> but um, let me uh, show you an example. So um, so I get this property alert from another EXP agent just because when I test people's aid, you know, sites out, like I forget to unsubscribe. <laughs> so this is old, but um, let's, it, it, it'll show automatically any campaigns that uh, any campaign emails that are sent any mass emails that are sent any property alerts that are sent listing evaluations and market reports any of these automatic automation type things or scheduled mass emails that get sent will automatically include an unsubscribe link okay so that's the first thing that you want to know. So with this guy down here, let's say I want to unsubscribe from his stuff. So it's going to show right there. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to get that anymore. And, you know, that's great because, you know, when people unsubscribe, that's great because that means somebody didn't report you as spam. They just unsubscribe like normal. But it, notice it takes me to, this is actually Jeffrey Little's website, jeffreylittle.exprealty.com. And I'm logged in. I'm, it remembers me. I am logged into the website. And so I have the search alerts and everything that are set up for me. Um, they're, they're coming to me. So now, you know, this is, works like a normal um, unsubscribe link. So when you like, you think about yourself, when you unsubscribe from some things, once in a while, you'll get one like, okay, you're unsubscribed. Cool. It's a one click unsubscribe thing. This is a two click. This is like more traditional. What happens is, is it takes your client or your prospect to this page and where they can totally unsubscribe from here. Okay. So they have the option to just stop the listing alerts, you know, trash them, create something new or totally unsubscribe from getting these things. So they have to do that. So I'm going to do that myself. So I click unsubscribe. So now I'm not registered on this website anymore. I, all right. I'm not, I'm, I'm still there. He still has me as a lead, but, um, but I'm now unsubscribed from getting the emails. Okay, so that's how it works. And the only thing that's new and different is that the unsubscribe link is now at the top of that information. It used to be in the bottom and it was harder for people to see. Oh, and if somebody wants you to remove them from the property alert, then great. Then you, that means they're, that's, that's nice because they're not now, unsub, they're not unsubscribing themselves. You can just turn off the search alert. So Frank was saying, if somebody says, remove me from the property alert, you know, they have not unsubscribed yet. You can still send them email and you can just go to your property alerts and set the alert as not active. And ta-da, now they can still get emails from you, just not property alerts. Or you can adjust the property alert down to just once a month so they're not so bothered by it. Another new update that I thought was fun is you can now put in emojis and subject lines. Yay, couldn't used to do that. And I, a lot of people complain, have been complaining, like why, you know, in other marketing type software, like constant contact or whatever, I can have emojis and that's not fair that I can't do it in Cape Cod. They finally came out with that update. So how would you do that? Um, so again, I'm just going over a couple fun updates and then we'll get into some more meat and potatoes training. Okay. All right. So how would you do that? Well, um, uh, I'm in my smart CRM here and there's a couple things I can do. Thing one, let's say I just want to email somebody manually. Okay, so let's say I want to email Nicole manually. I could go send email. And then notice, you know, and I write her a little message here, blah, blah, blah. Notice I've got these emoji options and I can put them inside the text, the, the body of the text. Um, or I can copy and paste and actually put it in the subject line as well. And it will work because I just tested it. So, so that's for manual. Um, ones. You can also do it for campaigns. 
So let's go into our marketing smart campaigns, templates. And so maybe you'll find one of the templates that you use or that goes out in some of your emails. So I'm going to find one that I use. And I, I, did, I did it earlier so you can see, I'm going to go edit. This is using the advanced email editor. It works the same way. I just clicked in the body, found the little emoji symbol, called it up, and then and then added the emoji where I wanted it in the in the chat in the uh, subject line. So and then you update the template, and now it's going to be there when it come, goes out in in campaigns wherever this wherever this template is attached to whatever campaign it will be included with it. So that's a little fun tip. All right. And then finally, updating behavior alerts. Here I am under marketing and I look at behavior automation, which I can found he find here and manage my settings, or I can scroll down and look at behavior automation here. Um, behavior automation, behavior alerts. This is what KB Core is doing behind the scenes. But um, these are behavior alert actions that happen when your contact does a certain thing on your website. So for example, if they view five properties in one day, they're gonna get a text message. If there's a phone number, if there's no phone number, they're gonna get an email. Um, and so if any of these actions happen from any of your leads on your website, they're gonna get these messages. They're only gonna get up to one a day. So if they do several of these things in one day, they're not gonna get multiple messages. They're gonna get one, okay, that responds to what they did. And um, again, if they have a phone number, they'll get a text. If there's no phone number, then they're gonna get an email. It'll be one or the other. And then you can see what's gonna be sent here, okay? In the past, you could not edit these. Now, honestly, I don't think really anything's wrong with any of these. Um, they're fine. <laughs> but you can look at what they say. And in the past, you could not edit these. And guess what? You can now. So I did. The only one I did edit was this first one. So how you do it, you just, you know, you can look at, like, say you look at the text and you're like, okay, that's what it says. I want to change something. You can click edit. Now I'm going to tell you that, um, if, I'm going to see if I get rid of this, if, if it will go back to what it was. Use default template. Okay. So I'm going to use the default template. And then here, um, this is the one that I don't like. Because it just says, you know, thanks for visiting our site. Are you focused on any specific area property types? And then it just has agent first name. Now, I don't, this person, I'm not that informal with some of these people. They don't know who I am yet, or I haven't, they don't know, like me, know me, trust me to just say Sylvia, like I'm their new best friend or something. You know, maybe it's somebody I know really well, but what if it isn't? I'd rather have it be more, have more information there. The rest of these, oops. The rest of these do have first name, cell phone, and website. I like that. So all of the rest of them have all the information that I want. First name, cell phone, agent site, you know, at least. And so that's fine. I can leave those. But what I can do is edit them. And I have two options when I edit. So on the text or the email, either way, I can A, I can go into my smart campaign templates and I can create templates for my different behavior alerts, um, whether they're emails or texts. I can create those templates ahead of time and then search for the template and add it and save it here. Or I can just actually create it right here. So I am going to um, paste what I took away. And so how, how, how do you, whether you're creating a template right here and you're saving it here, or you're creating a, a template in your campaign area to add the template here, when you create the, um, the template, all you need to know is you want to create these merge tags to fill in certain information. So you'll notice, um, for example, um, you know, I want to call them by their name. And I also want, instead of just my first name, I want my full name there. Okay, I want to say my full name. And so, not just Sylvia, I want to say Sylvia Dana. So it's my full name. It's a little more, um, you know, formal, I guess. And so, um, so it did just say first name. So, but I, what I did is I added the additional information. So how do you do that? You call up the information with the little curly Q bracket. And so I'm gonna put, I called it up. I did a curly Q bracket and I'm gonna go agent full name, comma, 
agent. I like to do um, office name because the op, my office name that I'm associated with EXP is EXP Realty West Michigan. And I, I like that it says that. And so I'm going to put um, fill in my office name because it'll say Sylvia Dana, EXP Realty West Michigan, and then my cell phone, agent cell phone. So that's how you call up a merge tag so that when the lead gets this, it'll fill in that information there. It'll fill in what their first name is and it'll fill in your information there. Okay, so I can just save this right here. I don't have to go back and create a, a template. So isn't that fun? So there's a three new updates I wanted to show you. So let me just kind of go and see some of your comments here. Dwight, is there a way to see the values of what the tags are? I don't know what you mean, the values of those tags. Like, well, I mean, let's look at it. So on this one, the first name, it's going to be whatever the first name of the contact lead is. Now, if their name is not validated from KB Core because they had a Yahoo email address or an AOL e email address, which means you're probably not going to get a good validation or sometimes Hotmail, it's going to say coolguy19 at yahoo.com. It's probably going to fill in there with coolguy19, which is fine. They know who they are. <laughs> okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, and then where your full name comes from is your agent profile. Where your, um, and then your agent's cell phone number is come from your profile. So let's look at that because I think that's what you're asking me. If I go to my profile and edit my profile, as long as I have a cell phone listed in here, that's what's going to go in that field. Um, and then my office name, where you can see that, if I click on offices here in my profile, my primary office is EXP Realty in West Michigan. Okay, so that's how I know what my office name is. Yes, Karen, there's there's default templates already. You just now have the option to change them in behavior alerts. You can change all of your campaign templates to whatever you want, but you could not change the, the behavior alert templates until recently. Can you adjust the settings to send those texts delayed? No, Steve, not these, not on behavior alerts. Behavior alerts are separate from campaign automation and automation, they do what they want and it's fine. And I will tell you, 99% of the people I that get my stuff from campaign automations, they truly think it's me doing it. Like they really believe it's me. I've had people say, wow, you are just so on top of it. And thank you so much for following up with me. <laughs> like they think I'm doing something when really I'm not. I'm vegging out in front of Netflix. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Formal signature line is also in the email. I don't know what that means. So like if you want to use your foot, you, you want your merge tag to have your agent signature that's actually in your agent signature in your profile, you can do that instead. I think that's way too long and messy for a text message. If I get long, weird text messages like that, I don't like it. I block it. But if it's just something simple that just is a name, a phone number, who I am, great. John says he doesn't want his cell phone number on the behavior alerts. Okay. Shouldn't I use a smart number on them? Okay. You can use the smart number. On them. So here's John. That's a great question. The reason that I, as a best practice, teach using your cell number is because not everybody understands that they should be paying $27 extra a month for their own smart number. Because by default, these behavior alerts, message, text messages are going to get sent out or you have text messages included in campaign, and where do those text messages come? They come from the smart number. And if you're not paying $27 extra a month to have your own smart number, and somebody decides to call that smart number, or even just reply to that text, it could get round robin to another agent. So just as a best practice, I teach putting my cell number there. But sure, put in your smart number. I don't care. You can edit it now, so do what you want. Okay, Rick, I noticed that the text messages from the smart number were not a complete text. Well, Rick, the where the only thing that comes from the smart number is, as far as text, is either texts from the behavior alerts, which you can look at those and then decide to edit them if you want to, or they come from your campaign. So you can look at your campaigns and edit your campaigns. Um, if you use your smart number and then leave KB Core and someone you had been communicating with calls a smart number, even though you have, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good point, Carla. If you don't, you, if you stop using that smart number, you stop using KB Core um, or stop using that smart number and somebody else has that number, um, 
you know, they don't have your cell phone number anymore, then yeah, it's definitely getting round, round and robin to somebody else. How do I know how to respond to one of my engagement emails? So they just adjust their settings and when they say they'll reach out. Lisa is asking a question. I definitely want to respond to it. She's like, how do I know how to respond when some, some of my, when somebody responds to me, if somebody replies to me, what should I do? Should I just adjust their settings when they say they'll reach out? You are the boss. You need to tell your people what to do. And I'm not kidding. You guys, you're too nice. You think that you're, you think these prospects or your clients are the ones in charge, but you need to be the one in charge. Uh, you keep the ball in your court. You're the one pursuing them. Like if you're trying to date somebody, you know, if you're trying to date somebody, you can't be the girl in this is what I'm saying. You can't be the girl, you know, just waiting for somebody to call you up if they want to take you out. Like, no, you got to be the one who is pursuing this person. So I don't know if you want to sell somebody something, you need to tell them you need to pursue them. Okay. You need to pursue them and you, they need to know that you are super motivated to work with them. And that is how you're going to, that's how you should respond. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. When you click on the subscribe button below this video, you'll see a little bell, click on the bell and you'll get future notifications.